5.50 a.m. That's how you know I'm back on prep. When I'm up early and ready to kick ass while everyone else is still sleeping. So I saw the Chris Bumstead clip. You watched it? Yeah, well I watched, I watched that little segment of it. So he was saying, I think Sadiq was joking about the dark web. Yeah. I'm definitely joking about the dark web, Chris. Like, first of all, I'm not cool enough to even know how to get on the dark web. Like, it sounds fucking cool as shit. If I was able to get on the dark web, um, I'm sure I'd never leave my house because I'd be ordering all types of shit. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised because breast milk is fucking sick. So in a few months, we could talk about that. It's funny because uh, I was testing some of the guys and I was like, yo, would you try it? You know, my wife's breast milk. Like, nah, that was a good answer. Good answer, dude. Now, at this point in my prep, I'm still not doing cardio. Um, I am training calves and abs every other day, but the cardio will probably start in about four weeks. But when it comes to cardio, I don't do this tremendous amount of cardio. Uh, more so like 15 to 25 minutes maximum. Usually, like it's 20 to 25. Um, as I get closer to show, I'll actually back off cardio if my conditioning is on schedule, which it usually is. So today we'll train chest, triceps, and calves. Sometimes I can't even believe that I'm doing this again. Like I love bodybuilding, but like doing a contest prep at this level is like, <laughs> it's insanity. Like right now you see me smiling, you see me happy. But there's also something you can see, which is I have a tremendous amount of butterflies in my stomach. Um, I know that there's going to be a world of hurt, suffering, and pain that's going to accompany this prep. Maybe not so much now where we have over three months away from the show. But certainly when we get to that eight-week mark, six-week, four-week, two-week, forget about it. Like body is broken, back is broken, hips are super locked up fatigued, a hungry, irritable, and then when we get a couple days closer to show, then you get a ton of, ton of different side effects, you know? Headaches, irritableness, um, you get lightheaded, you know, just from the depleting phase. You're doing so much cardio, you're in such a calorie deficit, you're overworked, overstimulated, overtrained, undersleeped. You know, that's another aspect. When your body is in such a fat burning state, it's hard to shut it off. So you just, you know, you go from sleeping six hours to like sleeping like two hours. But in some way, I love this shit. You know, it's like, how the fuck can I say all that and still love bodybuilding? I must really love bodybuilding because this is like my 20 something pro show. And I lost track. That's how many pro shows I've done. I've lost track. I anticipate two-time Tampa Pro champion, and this will be my seventh Olympia qualification. Wow. Originally, I was gonna do the Chicago Pro on July 20th, but my longtime friend, my posing coach, my right hand, Kenny Wallach, informed me a few things. He said, that he wasn't going to be able to be at the Chicago Pro. And uh, bodybuilding is such a team effort, you know. I have, you know, my trainer. I have my nutritionist. I have my posing coach. You know, these are my closest people. We travel together. We're ride or die. So it's like, man, I don't want to really compete without Kenny. So he also brought up a good point. Two weeks after is Tampa Pro. Tampa Pro is a very prestigious show. We've won the show before. Um, it's phenomenally run, so he recommended that I really do consider doing the Tampa Pro in replace of Chicago Pro, which to me is not a huge deal. July 20 versus August 2nd, you know, and the goal here is to win the Olympia, you know, like, yeah, I want to win the Pro Show to qualify for Olympia, but it's like... You know, I got to be so good that I got to win the Olympia. I got to look like the Olympia champ. So 
I don't want to say I'm looking past this show, but it's just very important for me to qualify in order for me to achieve what I set out to achieve. Now, the opportunity does arise where I could do multiple shows. So if for some reason I miss my peak or for some reason I miss my flight, if I don't compete, if I get sick, if I have to pull out of the show, there's other shows I could qualify at. Um, but also Kenny was saying that, you know, this is probably the biggest and best show you qualify at. You know, that's not Pittsburgh or New York, which are two huge shows. And New York Pro is simply not an option just because I need more weeks. Like I ran out of weeks to get, you know, peeled. So I took my bulk pretty far intentionally and I just won't be ripped in time for New York or Pittsburgh. Hey, good morning. Nice to meet you, I'm Sadiq. Natasha, nice to meet you. I wish you all the best today, Thank you. Tommy. Thank you. How's it going? Amazing. You feel good? Yeah, I feel amazing. We have a long time still, 18 weeks. Yeah. You still happen a lot. Yeah, Where's yeah. Your weaknesses? Where's your strength? Where's uh, my weakness is uh, like mentally. Yeah, no, I'm no. very bad at numbers with math, but my strengths are my entire body yeah. and my good looks. <laughs> yeah. I'm natural, so yeah. I'm under European. Uh -huh. Amazing. But I yeah. My career, so yeah. Up. Yeah. 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 I was competing at one point in my career, natural too, at one point in the beginning. Yeah. It was nice. If yeah, you can't have a good natural yeah. physique, yeah, then you can't have a good oh. physique at all. Yeah. I know about me. I'm gonna go 90s. Okay. <laughs> I'm going 90s. I already know about me. So one exercise, like everything is pumped. One exercise feels like doing a whole workout. I'm super pumped. My body is a fine-tuned machine right now. Get them pumped easy. And this exercise is pretty cool. You know, the first exercise we started out with some heavy, flat dumbbell flies. What I want to focus on there is really stretching out the pectoral, okay? The fibers run horizontally, so we're actually trying to control, keeping our elbows locked and kind of just like you're hugging like a big tree. You know, you're just gripping and hugging. Second exercise is going to be a press variation. We're gonna go on a Smith machine. We're gonna do one half rep, one full rep. That'll count as one rep. Yo, put some weight on here. A 10. That's something, I need something. It's too light. I can't feel it. Pumped up, pumped up. My philosophy when it comes to chest training, heavy weight, eight to 12 reps. As soon as you work up to your heaviest weight, come down for a back offset and then finish pumping out your chest. Get as much volume and blood flow in it as possible Good. before you move to the next exercise. Good, <sighs> one more and rack it, that's it, rack it, rack it. <laughs> Ready, let's go for 10. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. 
hold a pencil. Hold a pencil in here. All right, we do pec deck fly, or we can do laying down dumbbell press. Dumbbell. Let's do the dumbbell now. All right. I'm all hopped up. All right, we do three and three count, or just play by ear? I feel like we haven't done regular speed. Want to go a little bit heavier today? Yeah, let's go with the regular speed. Now, what I just said, do you want to do three and three? What I'm speaking about with three and three is the tempo. Three seconds up, three seconds down. Obviously, that could change two and two, two and three, one and three. But those are just indicators we're using to describe the actual methodology of the lift. Conrad suggested we haven't done regular speed in a while. So one up, one down, one up, one down. Six more. Three, four, five, last one. Perfect speed, perfect reps. Holy shit. So chest is actually one of my weak points. This year it doesn't look that weak. It looks pretty strong. I think being naturally so broad and wide with my shoulders could appear to make the chest shallow, but now I'm more pumped. By yourself. Let's go. By yourself, by yourself. No touch. Good. Whoa. A lot of times you hear about reps and sets, but you don't hear about tempo and speed. Very important. For somebody that's trying to activate their glutes or their quads, have a hard time mind-muscle connection, slow down the rep. If you take three seconds, you have more seconds to trigger and elicit a response to that particular stagnant, non-responsive body part. Same thing like a chest. Hey, too fast. Once I slow down, you can see more contraction. The best I've been. The oldest I've been. 11 years as a pro. You would think after 11 years, you'd be less than your best. I'm better than my best. I'm like a nice dry aged ribeye. Mad flavor. Oh, I didn't want to drop the weights like that, but it was either drop the weights or mess up my pack. So the machine had to be dropped. One thing I love about this machine is the handles are kind of angled this way. I find when I press this way, compared to keeping my arms straight out, this way actually allows me to get a little more contraction and a little roundness to my pecs. So great machine. This could also be mimicked using dumbbells. I'm not over here with my dumbbells. I'm over here, elbows a little bit tucked. I want to move on to triceps now. I don't think my chest is going to get any more pumped at this point. Yo, what do you think about just going to triceps? Okay. You got one more or no? Yeah, I'm gonna do one more. All right, I'll wait for you. You got four more pounds to gain before we start to cut. Four weeks to gain four pounds. It's pretty doable at this point. If I could just put one pound here, one pound here, two pounds here, it would be straight. <laughs> 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 Oh, damn, holy shit, pump is crazy. Five more, one, two, three, four. Five more. Let's go, more. Good. 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 More. Let go, let go, let go.
Bubby, Bubbo, Bubba. Yeah, buddy. I, I'm driving home. Can I buy you guys anything? Um, I don't need anything. All right. All right, baby, I'll see you shortly. Gatorade, post-workout. So yeah, one time one guy came up to me and was like, why are you drinking that? It's got so much junk in it. It's like, dude, first of all, this has been a serious fucking training session. Secondly, a little bit of sugar post-workout is good because it's gonna act as a shuttle for nutrients so that your protein could hit the muscle faster. So, you know, it's more of a turbo or supercharge for your recovery. Not to mention your electrolytes and just the hydration benefits in general. And it tastes good. You think Arnold Schwarzenegger was walking around like, oh no, I can't eat or drink that. That's too many calories. No way. Arnold was not a bitch. But um, these days, people are so fixated on, um, you know, the eating and the nutrition that they forget about the training, that the training is the most important part. Um, obviously, everything in consideration. You can't be eating like a slob, like fried food and, you know, milkshakes all day. But, you know, if you're eating pretty decent and you're training super hard, you'll get a phenomenal shape. Look at me, for instance. I ate ice cream this morning. Uh, my breakfast is usually the cheeseburger with fries. Um, I eat, you know, pizza in the evening. And I'm in the best shape of my life because my training intensity is through the roof, which I wouldn't recommend for everybody because I've been doing this for 18 years straight. So I've been competing at the top level as a top pro for 11 years in a row as a winning pro. And then before that, another seven years of just obsession and a relentless pursuit of packing on as much lean muscle tissue as I possibly can. So I think I picked up another sponsor. I've been eating from this meal prep company, Eat Clean Bro. It's actually the name, which is a pretty cool name. And they ship domestically from state to state, which is pretty phenomenal. Food is really good. I was using them just as a fan. But I have that phone call set up for 1 p.m. I want to see if we could come up to terms. Something that not only helps my clients and my fan base, you know, get a discount, but also something that will make it worth my while to be involved in and put my name behind a company that has good meal prep. Because we all know meal prep, like sometimes when you reheat meals, pre-made meals, they lose their moisture, they lose their their taste and most importantly sometimes they lose their phytonutrients which is why I typically like to eat every meal fresh but now with two kids sometimes I just don't have the convenience to cook you know spend 30 minutes cook a meal then another 10 minutes eating it it's 40 minutes sometimes 40 minutes is all I get all day um, of personal slash free time and then I have a big deal happening with a supplement company I've actually been test driving a lot of supplements lately, um, seeing what products really work well for my body, seeing what good opportunities I have out there. And in terms of, you know, supplement companies, I've been with ones that were smaller with 10 to 15 employees. Then I had companies with hundreds of employees that were, you know, evaluated at over a billion dollars. Both have their pros and cons, but I feel like, you know, the big billion dollar companies you're at the mercy of an executive that may or may not understand the bodybuilding culture or the competitive culture of being in the IFBB or even the fan base and the demographic. Um, I think that it's easy for an executive to get involved with a company like bodybuilding. That's taboo. Like we're not getting involved with that. We're going to do like fitness stuff on TikTok where it's more like fitness dan meets dancing, you know, which is the furthest thing from what I do because I'm a legit top professional athlete in my sport, although it's a niche sport and it could be seen as taboo because there is drugs involved in the sport, as of all sports, 
you know, from the NBA, the NFL, you know, MMA, you know, there are just drugs involved in every sport. As long as there's competition, there will be people that are looking to have the competitive edge. So I'm in the process of finding my footing with a company that's more, I won't say so much on a ground level, but they haven't hit that billion dollar valuation yet, which is really sounds like somebody or a company that I would like to get involved with. So you want to do it? How about we add some extra protein and we'll just do liquid egg whites now. You ready? One, two, three, four. So what do we have here? Oh, you want a spoon? It's my favorite off-season breakfast carb. Now, I think a lot of bodybuilders, they've got involved in eating grits because we've all seen the famous videos of Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman is the goat of bodybuilding. Um, he's up there with Arnold and, you know, Lee Haney. But um, he would just make himself a big bowl of oats. And we figured if it's good enough for Ronnie Coleman, it's definitely good enough for us. So three packets of grits is equivalent to 66 grams of carbs. If you're tired of oatmeal and cream of rice, I highly recommend giving Panda. grits a try. Panda. Panda. Good job, Santino. Wow, you're doing good. All right, let's let it cook a little bit. Let's let it cook a little bit. Oh, God bless you. Another reason why grits is a good option. You don't want to always be eating oatmeal all the time. Um, it's like watching the same movie all the time or, you know, eating the same breakfast all the time, doing the same workout all the time. Give your body a different look, you know, give yourself some different foods, different workouts, periodize your foods and your workouts for best results. Now, 66 grams of carbs is not nearly enough. We're gonna add about 25 grams of carbs, one slice of white bread. Now, prepping with kids is not ideal, but I try my best to involve Santino in the cooking process or you know, eating some of the same foods that I'm eating. But the coolest part of this whole thing is you'll see. I've only improved having kids. You know, of course I have a lot less free time to, you know, cook my meals, eat my meals, but it still doesn't deter me from doing what has to be done. In fact, it motivates me because I have to do it now because I have two children that are relying on me and depending on me. It's good for my family's legacy. That's dad. He's been trying to win the Olympia for 10 years and he did it, dude. Google his name if you don't believe me. And I'm looking all sorts of fucking veiny and jacked. All right, here's meal number one. This is breakfast, guys. Meal number one. Come stand over here. Come stand over here and wipe your mouth. Meal number one. Seven egg whites, three yolks, one slice of white bread with butter, and three packets of grits. Together, it's about 100 grams of carbs and about 6,000 grams of protein. Yeah. Are you upside down? So what I've actually been doing differently this off season or this bulking season or whatever you want to call this, this mass building phase, I've always kept my protein like relatively high, like seven ounces of cooked protein per meal. And I would increase my carbohydrates by about 50%. But I wasn't able to pack on a lot of size until I really decreased my protein. Like normally I have like 10 egg whites. This is seven egg whites. Normally I have seven ounces of chicken breast. You know, now I'm eating closer to four and a half to five ounces. I'm just really going like lower with the protein, higher with the carbs and higher with the fat. And that's been a catalyst and stimulus for me to get so much bigger. In fact, I'm about eight pounds bigger than I was for my Pittsburgh Pro Prep last year. And I've already got 18 weeks left, so I'll probably gain another four pounds. So collectively, I'll be 12 pounds heavier than my heaviest bulk previously, just by dropping my protein intake slightly. All right, 
what do you say? You say, thanks for watching our YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And um, guys, if you're commenting, Chelsea's actually on the laptop now responding back to every person that comments on this video. So just know that your, your comments are going to get replied to and taken very serious. Hey, make a normal face. All right, well, maybe she won't reply to all the comments, but how about this? I'll personally reply to at least a handful of clients' comments. So five comments I'm replying to. You know, when you touch your face, it's a lie. It's like a tell, you know, like the CIA trick. So if someone's talking, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll do it tomorrow. They scratch your head, it's a lie. Yeah. Ah.